Hello, hello. I see people jumping on. Hold on, we're just in the camera. I promise it won't be earthquake all night. Hi, Renska. Uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Oh, hi, Yvonne. Um, I just hooked up the microphone, so hopefully that will be helpful. Um, what? No, it's right there. It's fine. Okay. Hello, hello. Hey, Mom. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, everybody. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna get started right away because we have, we have two stencils I want to play with tonight. So the first one that we're gonna do tonight is gonna be with oxides. We're gonna play with the dark sides, so you can see how to use all three pieces. So there's the moon. And then these are the accents on the moon. And then this one you can use as a mask. So we're gonna use all three of them so you guys can see how, how to use them. And then with this one, then we're gonna do with this one with Copics. So let's go ahead and get started with this one first and oxides. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get rolling. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it this way. I think long way like this. I'm so glad everybody's saying hi to everybody else. Um, you could do it on a bigger paper and do all parts of it, but I think tonight I'm just gonna use partial of the moon. And I'm gonna use washi tape to hold it down, or better yet, you know what? I'm not gonna use washi tape. I'm gonna use my magnetic board because it's faster and easier and because Dale got it for me, so why not use it, right? Okay. I'm gonna put it where I want it and then I'll put the magnets on it to hold it still where I want it to be. Also, I want the magnets to hold the paper so it doesn't move. I'm gonna make sure I have it lined up appropriately. There we go. All right, so I chose a couple of colors. I'm going to start by doing the sky with hickory or the moon with hickory smoke. So I have a blending brush from Rabbit Hole Designs and I'm going to start with this. Wow. Maybe I'll turn it. That way I can hold it while I'm doing it. So I want this moon, but I don't really need it to be smooth. I just need it to be close to the edge. And I'm moving it. So maybe washi tape would be better for this purpose. But I don't know. We'll see. We're going to roll with it because that's what I started with. But I'm okay if it's not ultra smooth because it's the moon. And I really meant... I really meant to do this differently. So, <laughs> um, hi Kathy. So I'm gonna stop because I wanted to use the gray as the accent color. So I'm gonna flip over my paper and that's why we love. So look how cool that looks. But it's just paper and we'll just flip it over. Look at me. I Man, I've had this planned and ready for about an hour and I still messed up <laughs> but that's okay you guys forgive me right plus people jumping in now they'll be excited that they didn't miss anything so I want to get this lined up oh 
Okay, one more take on this. Okay, let's start with tumbled glass. I want to start with tumbled glass. And if I don't like it, we'll flip it back over. <laughs> That's what makes it so fun. So I wanted the moon to be a little bit on the blue-ish side because I kind of see a little bit of, of blue in the moon sometimes. So I thought it would be kind of neat to have some blue on the outsides of the moon. So I'm going to start... Oh, she did? Yes, new nails. I got my nails done tonight, today. I wanted them to look good for craft roulette tomorrow night. And for you guys. So I went and got them done because they were so long, I needed to cut them shorter. They were killing me. Wasn't able to type very well with them, so. Now, I'm okay with this not being a consistent, smooth, um, color because it's the moon and the moon is not smooth we all know that so I'm okay with it having a little bit of different colors on there now I want to use the hickory smoke yes my nails they're very sparkly today okay so we're going to take this one off and we get the ooh la la woohoo we have the start of a moon. And then, this is the piece that has all of the craters in it. So, I'm going to lay it here and see which way I want the craters to be. They could be like that. Or they could be like that. Not like that. Um, I think I like this one the best. So, we're going to do this one. So I'm just going to place it pretty close to the edge. And then I'm going to put these magnets back on. I love these two layer stencils. So cool. Hi Marlene. And then we're going to use this hickory smoke and we're going to start filling in these little craters here and I just thought this would look better with the gray on blue but I mean you can certainly use gray on gray or you know however you want but I wanted to do it different than I have in the past so I chose blue and gray uh, they're really cool you guys, these stencils are so fun. I I mean, ooh, I love them. I love the moons. I, You know, I'm a huge fan of the outer space and um, doing outer space stamp sets. So I was super stoked about this release this time because it's so much fun. You can do so much with the little aliens. No, it was not. Okay, so here we go. Now we have this really cool moon with crater. I love it. The colors you can choose, you can make it look like a planet or you can make it look like Earth. If you turn it this way, maybe you could kind of get a little bit of an Earth look. So you could make it Earth or you can make it another planet or you could make it whatever you want. So I wanted to show you how to use the mask. So once we cho chose how to do this, I'm gonna place the mask over it. And this is where I'm gonna put all these magnets. So I really want that to stay still. And then I chose more colors that I don't usually use. Hi, Bestie. And we're going to do the sky. So, I know this won't surprise anyone out there. Villainous Potion. <laughs> purple. Because, you know, I love me some purple. Oh, I should have moved this down because I want to color all of this. So, I'm going to try to move it all in one shot. 
we'll see how well that goes perfect because I want the purple to be more up here at the top so I'm just gonna start putting it in it's gonna make it really look galaxy ish which is kind of what I was going for and again I don't need this to be a solid color because I'm I have more than one color so I'm okay Jamie, did you take that up there and give it to everybody? All right, I don't want it to be too dark because I'm gonna use Uncharted Mariner and, and it's pretty dark. So let's see if they'll blend well together. So this one, Uncharted Mariner or at least that's how I think you say it. And that one I want to do closest to the stencil. So it'll kind of mix with the moon and then it'll get it'll get darker with the purple. Oh, you swapped. That's a bummer. I do want it to be pretty solid up against the moon, so I'm going to play a little bit with it around here, so I want it to be kind of dark. This is, I, this is a really juicy oxide pad, and now I'm just going to use whatever is left on the brush to kind of blend this purple and blue together. It may have to come in a little bit more with the purple, but I thought this would be super cool looking, almost like a, like a galaxy, which is kind of what I was going for. So this is the purple again, and blue together. I'm picking up the purple from the table or from the mat. I want to make this other corner a little bit darker. Does the mask come with the moon stencil? It does. It Yes, it does. Because we, we figured since the stencil cut and then you had the masking part, we might as well include it in the stencil set. So we did. All right, moving back to the Uncharted Mariner. So kind of a little bit of a back and forth so we can get a mix of the purple and the blue. Okay. So this looks way smoother to me in person than it does to you guys on camera, I think. But I really like it. So I think I'm going to stop there and mix those two colors together. And let's see how close I got with the matte. With the mask. Jamie, you leaving already? Okay, taking my magnets off, lifting this up, and look at that. Isn't that awesome? So you could make a bigger card and you could use, um, you could use the whole moon or you could use part of the moon. Isn't that super cool? And I like the blue because it really makes the moon look like it's glowing compared to the background. You could also use the mask and put it in the center and create like a vignette. Yeah, that's true too. And give yourself a frame. Dale said you could use it as a mat and then give yourself a vignette around your picture if you wanted to. But isn't this super cool? So just as a recap in case you weren't... Uh, you weren't thinking you were going to need the colors. This it was tumble glass we started with. And then we went into hickory smoke. And then villainous potion and uncharted mariner. And look at how cool that looks. I just love it. I was hoping the moon would look like it was glowing. Wasn't sure if it would come out that way, but it certainly did. So I'm super happy with that. Now... I'm not going to make a full card out of this because we're not going to color um, aliens for this tonight because I want to color 
the other stencil. So this kind of just gives you an idea of how to use the stencil. So I definitely wanted you to have that. So now that we have that one, I knew that would be fast. So I'm going to grab my little um, baby wipes I have on my desk and clean off my little magnet thing. It cleans really easy and simple. That makes me happy. Oh, and I think I threw all my napkins away. That's okay. I keep them close by. So just a napkin to wipe off the wetness. And we're ready for the next one. And I think I'm going to try to use that with my next stencil too, but we'll see. I might just hold it with my hand. So anyway, that is the that is the dark side stencil. And hold on while I put away my inks. Okay, so that was the dark side. And now we're going to look at the light side. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to look at the other stencil. So we have a fresh new paper. And then this stencil is called Celestial. And you can make a moon or the earth with that or planet. You can make Saturn with this one. Or you could flip this around and put the stripe in there again and make it a bowl, which would be fun. And a moon. And then these little things right here are to show shooting stars, which I will show tonight. And then there's several different shapes of stars. And then there's a whole bunch of stars, like for a, a starry night sky. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Um, hi, Gayla. So what I want to do tonight is I'm going to add a whole bunch of these to my paper. And then we're going we're gonna to design a background for a card and we are going to make it into a card today so I'm going to use my 0.7 multi liner it looks like this so there's two different kinds of these one says SP and the other one doesn't and they're black and what they are is disposable these these are refillable so this pulls out and you put a new ink in and the nibs can be changed so just like a Copic but the other ones are just once they're gone they're gone so you just throw them away okay so what we're going to do is we're going to start by just putting some of these designs on our paper so I'm going to start with this one so now we have a planet and then I'm going to move over here And I'm going to do another one off the page. And I think I'll put a moon up here. Oops, got a little happy there. And then maybe we'll do, this is the Saturn planet. So we're just going to put it on there like this and then this ring goes right around it up yep yeah. so it lines up so you can put the ring around it wow I have I didn't get it lined up perfectly, but that's okay because we're going to color it anyway. Um, and we're going to make another one, so we'll try that one more time here in a minute. Okay, so I also want to put one of those down here. And then, let's see, did it? like that. Dale designed this stencil. 
Yes. <laughs> Dale designed this stencil, so he's telling me how to work it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I don't know why I'm struggling with that one tonight. I did just fine with it the other night. Let's practice that one, and I'll flip this paper over. Let's do this one more time. Am I supposed to trace the bottom of it? Yeah. Okay. It's so close, but no cigar. Do I have the sample? I bet I have the sample. No, you have to say, I think it's because you're using a, the pen. The pen? And it's, it's, there's a small gap in it that you're catching the lip. Oh, the, because of the pen? You have to angle the pen. Oh, so when you use the stencil, it does, I mean, when you use the oxides, it doesn't do that. Oh, I don't have any more papers cut. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, give me just a second. I got to cut myself a new piece of paper. It's okay. I got it. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I think it, the paper one is the one I used the last time and that's why it was so easy to do because I can move the paper around. All right, one more time here. Now that I know how to do it, okay, we're going to go with four. We're going to go with four, and a, four inches by five and a quarter and that's so that we'll have we'll have a room to do a mat frame around it okay here we go one more time all right you guys hanging in there hi Christy oh good Christy came in just in time to see it happen all over again okay so here we go first one and it won't be so heavy-handed this time. Second one. And I want a third one, so I'm gonna put a third one maybe right here. We're gonna make all of those look different. Each one of them is gonna look different. So I'm kind of excited about that. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so then we need a moon. I think I'll put one up here, like a crescent moon. I'll put one up here because I wanna show you how to make this moon glow. And then let's put the Saturn one right here. So this time, since I'm using a pen, I'm just gonna do that. There we go. Now we got it lined up. Perfect. Okay. Next, I'm going to do another one of these down in the corner, but I'm going to actually do it sort of off the page. go all right so now we have that one and then I'm gonna put a moon right here I think I want it to be more like this I want them to be in different directions just because it's more fun that way for me anyway and then I think think we'll put a moon over here so I'm just randomly placing these on there wherever I feel like it <laughs> so that we can just do some different 
design with it. Okay, so now I'm going to take the largest star in here and I'm going to color, I'm going to draw some stars out so we can give us a starry night. Yeah, I think I'll put one over here. And you can do them in different sizes, but I like the big one, so I'm just going to stick with the big star. I think I'll put one over here as well. I am terrible at drawing stars, by the way, if anybody was curious. So I am super excited about having this stencil because now I don't have to draw stars anymore. And I like that so much better. I think we need something down here. Maybe we'll just put some stars down there. Oh yeah, this. let's put one right here. And we can make this a shooting star. Let's see, I might need one more over here. There we go. I kind of feel like we're missing something. Maybe I'll just put another star over there. We can put stars wherever we want. The more stars, the better. There we go. Now that's what I was looking for. So I used several of these. I am going to use this again when I'm coloring to put the accents in one of the, the moons. But I'll show you how we're going to do that in a few minutes. Okay, so I've already chosen my, my Copic markers. And we're going to actually Copic color this. So I'm going to start out with doing this one right here, and I'm going to make it a great big planet like Jupiter or something. So I chose some colors. Hi, Amanda. I chose some colors to start with. I, I chose YR27, 24, 12, 42, RV42 and E51. So these five colors together, we're going to color this planet. Uh, I don't know what color real planets are, but these are what I have in my head, so we're going to roll with it. I don't need that anymore, so I'm going to put that back out of the way. And we're going to start coloring this planet. So I'm going to start by putting some of the darkest color. I want this side of the planet to be darker than the rest. And I don't want it to be a smooth, um, I don't want it to be a smooth stop. So it's going to have all different scattered edges because that's the way I want it to be. You have to be a little careful on the edge. So I'm building a little, a little frame around there. And then I want this to come out a little bit further with the dark color. So I'm just going to start out like this and we'll roll from there. Okay, so next we're going to take YR24 and we're going to start pulling from where we put that color. And I'm going to try not to get too close to the edge because I don't want to go outside the lines. If I do, don't worry, we're going to do the background so it won't be that big of a deal. I got out there outside the lines a little bit at the bottom, but it'll be okay because we're going to do a dark night sky background. Okay. Hi, Harlan. Okay. You can make it into the Death Star. So, yes, I could make it in the, into the Death Star. So this one is YR12. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing. YR12 is next. And with this one, I'm going to start 
shaping this around, but not all the way to the edge. I want to leave it a little bit with a little bit of a light side on that edge. Sounds crazy. This is going to look crazy while I'm coloring it. All the different steps will look a little bit crazy, but just stick with me. In the end, it's going to come out pretty cool. Okay. This is a good practice on how to color circles and how to shade. Okay. So RV42, this one's going to bring in a little bit of a peach color to our orange color, just to kind of change it up a bit. Again, it's going to look a little funny when you first start switching these colors up, but it's going to come together, I promise. I want this side of the moon to be a much lighter color than the other side. This is not a moon. What am I talking about? This is a planet. Okay, then we're going to switch to E51. And this is like a, hi Michelle. This is like a milky, um, like a milky white. I guess I could just call it milky white since it is. That's the name of the marker, but. So I'm going to start blending the milky white over here. And then I'm going to kind of go over this area right here. Notice I'm using the side of the marker because I want to put a lot of ink on the paper. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm letting it dry a little bit and I'm adding a little bit more of this. I may hit it with one more color that I didn't have out here, which I've been going over a lot of them with this one, but it's... Um, E41, just to deepen it up a little bit. And it's okay if it has weird shapes or weird um, designs to it because it's a planet. They never look smooth. So this is why our 12 coming in one more time just to add in a little bit that got washed out with the peach. And then the E51. And there we go. I think it needs a little bit more of the pink. So this is RV42. Oh yeah, that's gonna do it. And we need to put a little bit of that peach over here on the orange, otherwise it won't really blend as well. So I'm just kind of going over that to add the peachy color. Now that I like. I think we washed out a lot of the dark. So I think I'm going to go back in with the dark, the YR27, one more time just to give a little bit more depth over here. I kind of want it that, that depth in there. And whenever you go back with the darkest color, you have to walk forward with the other colors again. So this is YR24. And yes, I know my E41 is open laying over there. I'm okay with that for now. Well, I'm liking it better now. How about you guys? This is the YR12. Once I use this one, I think that'll be an, enough blending there that I can stop. Love it. I love it. So there's one planet for us. Hi, Melanie. And these planets, I mean, these, everything's going to look better when I put the really dark background on it. So now I'm going to work on this one right here. And this is going to be our Earth.
let's see. So for Earth, for my Earth, I chose YG45, B45, B41, and YG41. This is going to be more like my planet Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stencil and I kind of want to get the design of what I think the earth might look like. So I'm going to put this on there where I want it to be. And then I'm going to take my YG45 and I'm going to start coloring in here, but I'm not going to go to the edges because any time that you try to color in a stencil and you go all the way to the edges, it bleeds out with your um, with your Copic marker. And I don't want to do that. I want this to be just my sketch of the, the shapes that will be on the earth. So then I'm going to turn it a little bit more because I want to put this one over here and I'm just kind of picking my own design to put on here just to give it some kind of shape and once I have those on there you can't see the earth you can't wait to see the earth yeah yeah it's going to be good. Okay, I think I need one more right up here at the top. And then I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to kind of bleed this one out a little bit and extend this one. I'm going to start connecting them together because, you know, that's, that's the way it looks. Putting some more. A little bit more in there but what it did was it just guided me to a very good area so I could make it look like an earth now notice I didn't color it solid I kind of did it sort of splotchy and I'm okay with that that's the way I wanted it to be for now then I'm going to come in with the B45 and I'm going to put where I want the darkest blue areas to be which would be more like the water areas now this is by no means a map I did not take geography in school I do not I'm not good with drawing maps but this is going to be my earth so in my world this is my earth so I'm going to put a little bit of this dark down here and then I'm going to come over here and put a little bit of the darkness over here as well so I'm just getting pretty close to the green, but not too much. I think I'm going to put some around this little green area as well. Like that. So starting to see it coming together. Hi, Nana Joe. Hi, Bambi. So you can kind of, sort of, hopefully you can visualize that turning that moon into an earth. So next I'm going to use the YG41. So this is more of the green color again. And I'm going to start blending that out just a little bit so it meets up with the blue all around where I left those blank spaces. And then I'm also going to go in and kind of smooth out the green just a little bit. I don't want it to be real smooth because it's really not on the map anyway, smooth like that. But anywhere where there's blue, I want them to meet up with the green and I want to bleed them out a little bit next I'm going to use the last color that I have which is B41 and I'm going to fill in the rest and blend all of these together so it's still going to look like the blue has water like there's big splotches of water but it's also going to fill it in all the way around so like lakes or however the globe usually looks to me in my head this is my planet right here and this is how I usually see it Now because that's significantly lighter than the blue I used, I'm okay with that, 
but I might wait just a minute for it to dry and go over some of the areas a second time because that'll darken it up just a little bit. And I wanna darken some of the areas so we have a lot of differences between our light and dark. And there we go. Now we have an Earth. I'm not doing all the planets, but <laughs> now we want to. I'm going to go ahead and do the moon here, like you would um, use this stencil for the moon. So we're going to start out with. We're going to use W's. So oops, W2, W1, W0, and W00. So I'm gonna start with the W00 and I'm just going to wet my paper with this color so we can get ready to put in all of our accents and stuff for the moon. How's everybody feeling about this? Pretty cool? I mean, you can use this stencil the way it's designed by just laying it down and putting oxides in it, but hey, you could use this on a card or this on a card. I'm just trying to show you all the different ways that you could use these on cards and how cool that it will look. I'm going to jump to W1 because I want to put some darkness towards the bottom of this moon. Kind of like we did with that one, but I want to put it on the bottom this time. You love it? And it was so easy to do. Like I did it in like just a couple minutes. Then I'm going to take my W00 again and I'm going to blend that out. Okay, so we're starting to get a little shape to our moon. I like that. So now I'm going to bring this back out and I want to make sure I wipe off any color that I have on there because we don't want to put blue on our moon. Okay, or green. So I should probably wipe it with the wet wipe. I don't want to put blue and green on my moon. Okay. So now I'm ready to start building my moon. I want to put the darker part. I want to put this bigger part down here where I put the dark. So you can choose however you want your moon to look, but this is what I've decided I want to do. And then I'm going to use the W2, and I'm going to open both caps. And I'm going to start putting that in, the W2. And I'm not going to go to all the way to the edges because I don't want it to bleed out, just like I did when I did Earth. But I just need to mark where I want all of those craters to be. I'm going to do the, all the almost all the craters this time. And this will give us moon, craters on our moon. I am going to put some little ones. So just touch lightly so you don't get too much ink spread going on. But it's okay if it spreads a little. I mean, it is the moon. So I'm going to darken some of the center areas just a little bit extra. So it'll look like craters all over with different depths. And then watch. Ha ha. We have a moon going on. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is so much fun. You can make so many different planets and moons and 
Now I'm going to use the W0 to kind of blend a little bit more in those little crater areas. We have some dark depth down here. I want to make sure nothing gets lost. So these little ones that we added, I might give them a little, a little texture, a little crater. Kind of want that one to be a little longer. And then we're going to take one clean swoop with our W00. And we're just going to go over it one more time. Just, we'll kind of blend them all together. I am going to go around the outside just to make sure I got ink on the outside. Jack, what's wrong? There we go. And now we have a moon, which is going to stand out so much more when, um, when we get the background on there. So stick around. You won't want to miss that. Hi, Selena. Okay, so now we have to do our, um, these Saturn planets. And I want to stick a little bit with that orange-ish color so that the whole um, picture will kind of blend together. So I'm going to use YR15, YR02, and then I'm going to use some E44, 43, 42, somewhere around there. And we're going to do the two little Saturn ones exactly the same. Or not exactly the same, but they'll be similar. Okay, so I'm going to start with the YR15, and I'm going to start putting just some some lines through they're going to be kind of random they don't need to be you know real defined just what whatever random stuff i'm going to put a little bit in the circles in the rings and i don't think that that color is quite dark enough so i'm going to go to the yr24 that we used over here and I'm just going to add a little bit in the center of these marks just to make them a little bit darker because I kind of want them to be a little bit darker. I mean, I picked these random colors, but in seeing it come to life, I want it to be a little bit darker. I'm just adding a couple of rings around the ring. And then I'm going to add just a little bit in the corners down here. Now I'm going to go to that YR02 and I'm going to just going to extend these out just a little bit. Kind of bring them together, extend them out. It's kind of a random right now, but just stick with it. It will all come together. It looks kind of funny right now. So now we're going to come in with brown, which is E44. And I'm just going to put some of that underneath some of these lines to bring them out a little bit. I want the bottom of the planet to be just a little bit darker and less orange than all of this. Also, I want to kind of keep that ring going, an additional ring around the center. It doesn't have to be straight. I wouldn't focus too much on that. Just want it in there. I don't necessarily need it to be perfect. Hi, Stacy. <clears throat> E43 is next, and this is where we're going to start blending some of this out. This is our third brown color, so I'm going to use a little bit more of this one, being that it's the true color. So 
So I'm just working this together a little bit around these edges here over top of the orange to kind of mute it a little bit. Next one is going to be E42. And this one's going to take just a little bit more of the blending, but I'm still going to leave a little area of white because I want to add one more color after this. And this one is actually just blending those colors together. We'll just fill in the bottom because it's under the ring. And we'll go a little bit further on this one. On these. There we go. Okay, I want to use E51. I mean, yeah, 51. Where, where is it? I know it's on my desk. Here it is. E51. <clears throat> we used 51 in here. It was milky white. We're going to use it all the way over this one. It will give it some texture and it will blend the colors. And that's what I want. It's okay if I go outside the lines. I'm coloring the background dark. I know I've said that once already, but just so you feel comfortable. I'm going to blend just a little bit down there because I want to kind of wash out that really, really dark line. And there we go. Now we have, you love, I, I have the whole universe in my hands. It's awesome, isn't it? So we're going to do this one kind of the same as this one, but I'm going to use orange in opposite places. So it'll look a little bit different. Since we decided we needed the YR24, I'm going to go ahead and start with that one. And I'm going to put just some longer, almost like this planet has some stripes in it. So they're going to be similar, but they're going to look a little, each one's going to look a little bit different. I like that. So this is, this is my, my universe. And you can build your own universe. Oh, the print, the last, oh, did you guys hear that? The last print we had to do on the 3D printer just finished. So now you guys don't have to listen to that in the background. <laughs> Yay! Now it'll be quieter. <laughs> er, quieter. So I'm extending out from where I put those other colors, making these lines longer because that's kind of, I just wanted to change it up a bit to show you that you don't have to match the kinds of lines that I do on your planet. You can make your planet however you want. I'm going to put a little bit of orange right there. I have the whole universe, the whole universe. Here's E44. This is the really dark um, color. I definitely want that to be in my ring. I'm going to use this one just a little bit less than I used it on the other one. And I'm going to use it just kind of in my little stripes here. It'll change up the, the pattern and the way the planet looks. So I think I want one like maybe down here like that. And now we're going to go to E43. This is that middle one. So I'm going to start doing the whole outside of the planet. since it's the true color. 
And then I'm going to start filling in some areas that I want this darker color to be in. What? Oh, yay! You got your scale! That's awesome! All right, so E42, starting to move myself over on the frame a little bit. Isn't this super cool? You can make your own universe. How awesome is that? This time I'm going to jump straight to E51. Hi, Pam. E51. And I'm going to do the whole thing to kind of blend that out a bit. I kind of washed out a lot of my um, really dark um extra rings in my ring so i'm going to go back around with this e44 and just kind of draw that ring back in there because i think it's cool looking and i really want it on there so i think it adds personality see see how much personality it gave that super awesome I love it. Okay. Now you have to do marker maintenance. Yes. And it, it won't be so bad. You, you won't mind. Okay. So now we have to actually do the moons. So are you guys ready to see how we're going to do that? That's going to be super fun. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? So we're going to use C1, BG000, C00, and Y quadruple zero. We're going to use Y quadruple zero, and we'll see how that goes for us. So here we go. We have three crescent moons to do. So you'll get to see it three times. So starting with BG000, I'm gonna start on the back side of the moon, but not all the way up against the white. Just gonna kinda draw in my own little line on the moon. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to extend towards the inside from that particular line. Hi Tammy. Next I'm going to go to C1 and I'm going to do the same thing but towards the inside of the moon. So here, not touching the edge, just going along the edge and then I'm going to extend that towards the blue. It looks pretty crazy right now, right? Wouldn't you say? Okay. So then we're going to take Y quadruple zero, and we're going to go along the edge here. And here. It looks crazy, I know. Hang with me. The first time I did this, I thought, oh, that's never going to work. But it did, so hang tight. Now we're going to take C00, and we're going to blend all of this together with the C00. So we want the blue and the yellow and the gray to all blend together. Okay. 
It's going to look pretty cool now, but it's going to look even better when we put that background on there. Let's see if I can hold that up so you guys can really see. It's, it's kind of gray on this side, blue on that side, and yellow all the way around. But I promise it'll be cool when you see it against the background. So let's repeat that one more time. Two more times, we'll do it. We'll do these two at the same time because we can do them pretty quick. We start towards the outside. Don't go all the way to the edge. Just kind of build yourself a little wall there. Then you're gonna extend from the wall towards the center of the moon. We're gonna do that on both of these. And then we're gonna kinda extend out, just like we did on the other ones. Then we're gonna grab our C1. We're going to go the opposite way. Just going to draw ourselves a line right here. We're going to extend out from there towards the center, but not all the way to the blue. Same thing with this one. Still leaving an open space between the blue and the gray so it, there's like a little gap in there. You want that to be there so it can blend together but still leave a highlight. Next we're going to use the Y quadruple zero and we're just going to go around the outside, the inside of the outside. Does that make sense? <laughs> around the outside just to get a little bit of yellow in there. We'll be adding a little bit more yellow when we start doing the background and it'll all come together. But for now, we want to start getting that yellow in there. Okay, and now we're going to use this C double zero and we're going to blend all those colors we just put on there together. I'm using a lot of ink. N notice I'm pressing it on the paper pretty heavily. Really want to get that to blend together. Especially in the center of the moon. Now notice I need a new nib. Can you guys tell by looking? If you guys watched my um, video on marker maintenance, you'll see that, see how the nib just bends like with barely any pressure at all? That means my nib is broken down and needs to be replaced. So I will do that right after this video. I just don't want to do it right now. I just colored the wrong one. So I was busy talking, but that's okay. Because it'll only blend it a little bit more. So it almost looks like we have a moon inside a moon, but we need that outer edge so we can get that glow like that moon glow. Okay, now we have our crescent moons done. So next we're gonna do all the stars and they're super quick. We're just gonna use two colors, Y18 and Y11. And on this, there's no fanciness to it. I'm just gonna outline with the dark color and I'll just do it on all of them first. It's a pretty quick, sh the longest part will be doing the background, but you guys are going to love it. I think you're going to love it. I'm super excited. This is just how to, how to color each of the planets and the moon, however you want to color them. It's kind of showing you how to color each one, and then we'll do the background, and it will really pop. 
and wait till you see what colors I chose for the background. That'll be super fun. Okay, Y11. So we're just going to dab Y11 in the center, and I'm going to pounce a little bit on there. I want to keep that light right in the center and keep that dimension going on those stars. Make sure I don't miss any. Yep, got them all. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out just a tad so you guys can see when I start the background what it's going to look like. Okay, so here's my background colors I chose. They're going to be a little interesting. V99. Then B37, then BV25. Those are the colors I'm going to use to do the background. And while we're doing that, we're going to need to pull in Y000 and possibly Y11. I'm not exactly sure yet, but we'll see how it rolls when we do it. So starting with V99, and this is going to be way easier than you think. V99 is kind of a purpley color, but it won't be purple when we get done. <clears throat> so the way I start this is I'm just going to randomly put some splotches in between the planets and the stars. It's not going to be colored solid or anything like that. It's completely completely random and completely splotchy. You always make a mess before you make a beauty. I'm going to stop here as soon as I do this side of the moon right here. And then we'll, after we get this built in, we'll do the top part. So you want to kind of do it in sections because you want to keep that paper wet while you're doing it. <clears throat> B37 is next. And what I'm going to do is go over the B99 and extend out just a little bit further than the B99. I mean the V99. This one I do just a little bit slower, but we have one more color to add so you don't want to go all the way up to, you know, the moon or the stars or anything like that. So we're just kind of blending out that purple and blue color together. It'll leave some dark areas, some light areas, and that is the intent. So, but you do want to make sure that you cover all the purple the V99 with the blue. You definitely have to get that covered. And I have a piece of paper here because I knew I was going to go off the paper. And you can do this with your with that end or this end. It doesn't matter. This end will cover more space, a little bit faster but you have to be really careful when you get next to the planets and the stars and such. But you definitely can use this end if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be really smooth. As long as you're getting that color in there, you should be good. This is a little bit smaller area. I'm gonna switch. All right, everybody with me so far? You guys are quiet. You must really be in watching, intently watching. How is this going to look when she gets done? The question is, do you have faith this is going to come out good? You guys been watching me a long time. I'm just doing one more quick swoop over top of it. 
just to make sure those colors get blended really well because we went over it kind of fast. There we go. All right, so this is coming along really quick. So don't be afraid to do this because it really doesn't take as long as you would think. So BV25 is like a grayish violet. So bring in a little bit of the purple back in. So I'm going to go, I'm not, I'm not going to go all the way up to the moon, but I am going to go all the way up to the planets with this color. So this is the one that, that will take a little bit longer than the rest. I do go over the blue and purple with this color just to get all those different tones of colors in there. I'm going to be turning my paper a bit just to make sure I get this blended out. I don't want to write on any of my planets, so I have to move a little bit slower. Getting the foundation down first is pretty fast. But coming back in for this part around the planets will take a little bit of time. Okay, so moving up here, I'm going to go all the way up close to the earth. Oh, Jack. You guys hear Jack walking around? He heard me say Michelle, and he's out here to say hi to Michelle. Michelle gives him bones. Okay, so when we go around this moon, we're gonna go around it, but we're gonna leave a little bit of a white there. And we're only gonna do that on the crescent moons. We're not going to do it on the other moon. You could, but I like to. I like the way it differentiates between the crescent moon and the regular moon. And then I'm going to go all the way up to the stars. This is mixing all kinds of colors in there, so it looks super cool. <laughs> There's Michelle. Hey, <laughs> she gave you your bones, Jack. This, actually, this nib is a little beat down as well. All right, I am going to go up against this moon. First, I'm going to put down the color so I don't go into the moon, hopefully. And then I'm going to blend the colors that are around the moon a little bit further out so they come out really nicely done. This is going to make this moon appear to be way more white than it was before, which I love. So getting this blended out, let me do this, these stars over here real quick. Might have to fill this marker again after I get done. You know I don't like my markers to get low on ink at all. So how many of you are going to try to stop by Craft Roulette tomorrow? 6.30 Central Time. 
I'm excited but nervous. Looking good so far. Okay, going around this moon, but leaving a little bit of white. Definitely want to cover the blue. Excellent. Almost to the point where we need to add the, go back to the first dark color again. And finish the top half. Now you could do this whole scene with oxides, but wow, wait till we get done. Such a wow factor when you do it with the markers. It's beautiful when you do it with oxides, but the markers, they're pretty cool too. All right, so going back to the dark colors so we can, oh, you'll be at work. Oh, bummer. You know you can watch the replay though, right? Can participate. And you can participate and make a card based on the parameters. Now remember, we're just randomly putting in some of this really dark purplish color. All right. Woohoo! Is there going to be a link? It's just Craft Roulette Live on YouTube. on YouTube. I think there is usually a link. Oh, I forgot to put the purple in there. Oops. Okay, we have to put the purple in here first. If you just go to um, YouTube, you can search Craft Roulette Live and it'll pop right up. Episode 157. It's episode 157, but you don't necessarily have to put that in, but you can if you want to find it faster. I'm gonna go ahead and do my BV25 on here. Cause this is so dark, I need to get it lightened up just a tad. Cause we missed that part when we were doing all the rest. Yes, it's central time. Yes, central time, 6.30. If you wanna see all the entries from the week before, you can tune in at 6.10 and they show everybody who participated the um, this past week. So if you submit a card, yours will be on there next time. Plus it'll give you an idea of how all the different levels of people who are participate, which might give you a, a little more confidence if you're nervous about doing it, which none of you guys should be nervous about doing, but. Going over the purple, filling in most of it. Remember, we have another color. We can do this a little bit faster with the back end of this marker, so I'm going to do that. going to be super fun. You guys will get to see what it's all about. And don't worry, they explain everything. So you don't need to know anything prior to watching. Just come watch. You have until Sunday evening to submit a card. 
um, if you want to participate, which we would love for you to, um, unless you're, if you're a Patreon, you get until Thursday, but I just joined as a Patreon about a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, um, so I could have more time, but um, you don't have to. You can just submit by Sunday night, and you're good. Uh, Craft Roulette has a variable time, but it usually runs about two hours, so they do the beginning piece of showing the card showcase from the prior week, then they'll bring on, uh, they'll do a little, the Mary Gunn will do a little introduction and then she'll introduce Sandy, they'll do some talking and then they'll spin the wheel and then once they get all the parameters, they'll talk about each of the parameters to explain um, what your different options are. After that, they'll start crafting and so they'll start making a card based upon those parameters and then they'll do a little wrap up and then they do a post show um, where they uh, will spin the wheel of last week's participants to give out prizes. So they usually have four or five different prize supporters that um, if you participate the following week, you'll be in that drawing and then you can be picked for a, a prize. I've won once. I got a $25 gift card from a, one of the um, sponsors. I used it too. Woohoo! And we've been get, we've been the sponsor this month, and we have we gave away we're giving away twenty five dollar gift card each week. So there's still, I think there's just one more week for us as sponsors. And with it being a live, they do have a chat available, live chat. So. Yep, and there's a lot of people on there, a couple hundred people. So you can chat with them if you want, or you can just linger if you prefer and not watch. But it's it's a lot of fun. You might want to add it to your fun day because it's super fun. I did it one time because um, Jamie had told me that she wanted to, she thought we should look into being sponsors. And uh, so I did it one time to see what I thought of it. And... I loved it so much now I'm going to be a guest on there. <laughs> so it, it's just, it's challenging, it's fun, it makes your brain think. But you can make your cards as simple or as elaborate as you want. It you don't you can do whatever you want. You have a lot of flexibility. And that's what I love about it is I can make it anything that I want as long as it has those parameters. So there's a ton of people, like I think there were 230 so far this participating somewhere around there this time. So that many different takes on the um, parameters last time. So, and, and the parameters last time, one of them gave me a little bit of a a challenge like it took me a bit to come up with something to go for that but I did but they do explain it they do give you ideas I was just trying to think outside of the box so it took me a little longer because I didn't want to take one of their suggested because <laughs> you know as Jamie says I like to be an overachiever so I wanted to come up with my own idea or version of the parameter so and Sandy asked me to make a card uh -oh. for her show so she, be she better pick some good she better get some good spins on the parameters <laughs> we um we want to beat the record on most submissions so we're trying to get people to play along so I'm hoping I get really good parameters because more people will probably participate but if I can get the sweeties to watch too, that w and some of them to submit, we should be able to break the submission record from the time before. That's the goal anyway. It's one of those, if you achieve it, great. If you don't, that's okay too. It's all good. Hi, Jim and Diana. 
See if you can catch it after work. We'll still be running, I'm sure, after you get off work. I bet it'll still be running. And they asked me a lot of questions. I guess the Patreons were able to submit some questions. So I'll be on a Q&A while I'm crafting. We don't teach you how to do the crafts, but you get to watch what we're doing and ask questions. And it's just fun. It's fun. You get to know people and you get to have fun and you get to come up with a, your own card idea. And some people craft during the show. And if you submit your card during the show, they pop it up on the screen. So that's kind of cool too. We are almost done with our last planet. This planet makes me think of Jupiter. I don't know why. Just... Maybe because it just looks so big. That's what she said. Because you know Jamie would say that if she was here. Almost there, almost there. So we really did color this whole background. It wasn't so bad. It didn't take too, too long. It was not too bad. So this is what we're going to do with the moon. So I'm going to start with the Y000 and see if it's enough. And I may, oh no, you know what? I think I, think I do want to start with the Y11. So Y11, I'm going to put Y11 along the edge on the inside of the line like this. all the way around just one thin line that's all I want and then I'm gonna take the Y triple zero and I'm gonna go around the outside of the line it is okay to go outside the lines I didn't get that oh Could you try again? Siri no one's talking to you Now, there is some purple and yellow blend, or blue and yellow, or whatever you want to call it, but that's kind of the point. Then it looks like it's in the sky, and like it's got this glow, and I kind of go over the outside and the Y11 that I put on the inside. And that will make our moon glow. And we're going to do the same thing on the other two. I love it because it's different than this one. It really looks like it's glowing. And we have a few more little things to add to really bring this to life, this background to life. We're, we're getting there, though. But I like this. I think I'll do one at a time. Depending on how bright you want it is what color yellow you'll use. I like the Y triple zero, but double zero might be pretty good too. It just kind of makes that moon look like it's glowing. This Y triple zero has a lot of colorless blenders, so the more you put on, the more it will move that purpley blue background we put on there and make it look like it's actually in the sky. Yeah. I have my um, leather on my costume, so it has that irregular pattern to it. You used to have a bar up the street called the Moon Glow. That sounds cool. That sounds like an awesome name. Alright, 
here we go. It does look a little bit like it's picking it up on the tip of my marker. You can kind of see a little bit of dark on there, but it's not affecting the color at all that this marker is putting out. So don't worry about that if it if you do this with any of your markers and it starts changing the nib a little bit. All you have to do is just see wipe it on paper and there is no it's still the yellow color it's supposed to be it didn't pick up any of the purple. It's easier to do it this way so I can really see. Okay, so now what we have here, I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Next, what, we, what we're going to do now is we're going to really fancy it up. It was years and years ago. We're going to start fancying up our, our little moon, our little galaxy or universe or whatever you want to call it. with white gel pen, white gel pen and shimmery pen. So remember when I told you, are you still frozen? Did you pop back out? On here, we have these three lines right here. And these three lines are for shooting stars. And I'm gonna show you how that looks because I think it's super cool. So I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to use my white gel pen. I don't want to move my... Just want to make sure it gets in there pretty thick, that white gel. And when I lift it up, you have a shooting star. And this one, I'll show you what some of the other ones look like. So I'm going to do a little one on this one up here, even though you won't be, well, I guess if I do it this way, you can. So I'm going to start. I'm going to use this one right here. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to go back and then I'm going to do this one and then this one and then this one, this one, and that one. Now that one looks like it's, it's shooting in from there. And you really can put these anywhere you want. This one. And you can do this, you know, with oxides as well. Um, like you could use the black if it's a, if you want it to stand out. But the white gel pen, I think, makes it look super cool. So I think I want to do one more. So I think I'm going to do maybe this one. They are just shooting all over this guy here. White gel pens don't like writing over themselves, but if you're patient and careful, you can get it to do what you want. So I think this is cool. I really like it. So now I'm going to add some tiny stars. So we have big stars that are up close, and then we have the tiny stars that are far away. And this is going to start really coming to life here. The stencil keeps sticking to my arm. And 
I'm really just putting them wherever, very random. Some bigger, some smaller. I love it. Hi, Catherine. And then just for a little bit of added extra, I put a few of them as the jelly roll, silvery, sparkly color so I get some sparkle. Because you know, if I can't use dots, I gotta use sparkle. Just a few. Now, isn't that just the coolest thing ever? I'm super excited about it. Okay, so I have cut, so here's what I thought. I knew that, let me zoom out now so you can really see. Okay, so that was my extra paper. So I knew I was gonna use some orange, so I pulled some orange paper and I thought I would use this tan as the background since it's so dark of an image. I'm going to cut my paper to four. I hope this is the right. And five and a quarter. This should be the correct size, hopefully. Pretty sure I set it up that way. <gasps> Darn it. I really want that border on there. So I'm gonna trim this one just a little bit. Just a little bit. Dang, I colored that and now I'm trimming it. <laughs> I am a-okay with that. I hope you guys are too. We're just taking a little sliver off of every side. I don't want to take too much of my shooting star off. Just enough that it'll fit on this background because I really want this orange background. I mean, really, really want it. There we go. Perfect. I also decided on a sentiment I thought we should put on this because I think it would be awesome to put from the Alien stamp set um, that says you're super stellar. I think that would be awesome. So I have some sweet sentiment paper here and I'm gonna stamp it in black on here. Let me stamp it and then I'm gonna cut it out. Hi Denise. Oh, you love it, Mom? I, I was really excited about doing this because I think you guys could have some serious fun with these stencils if you if you play around. I mean, everybody's planets, everybody's universe, everything will look different. Everybody's will look different. I love that. Where is my espresso makes life so much easier. Oops. Good thing it's a misty. I'm going to stamp it one more time just because I want it to be super stellar dark. Ah, yes. I like it. I'll clean that after we're done. Okay. I am going to fussy cut this out, but it will only take a second because it's pretty square and doesn't have any, um, doesn't really have any, any outside design to it. So it should cut out fairly easily. You know, I don't like all that extra paper on there. So I am going to cut it with just a little bit of a border. but I am going to cut it rather square. And yes, I'm eyeballing it, so let's hope I get it square. Ah, pretty.
pretty good. I'd say pretty good. All right, here we go. Finishing touches. You guys ready? All right. Let's glue our, look at the back. I put a lot of ink on that paper. Let's glue this down to our orange. Let's make sure we got it all lined up the way that we want it. Perfect. Flip it over, rub it with the espresso, get that glue all on there. Good. Fold our card in half, which I already had ready. Now we're going to put our planets on the front. Oh no, this card's going to come together really fast now. I think I want it this way. I'm going to place this on here. I like that background. I think it goes really good. Flip it over. Rub that. And now we have to attach our sentiment. But before we attach our sentiment, I kind of want to put I think I'm going to use this, the gray that we used earlier, the hickory smoke, and I'm just going to go around the edges so this isn't stark white. I don't want it to be stark white, and I don't really need to touch the, the ink pad again. I just want to give it a little bit of that gray in there. I think it'll make a difference that way. And then I'm going to put Sweet Pops on the back. These are the pop dots we have in the shop called Sweet Pops. That's what I'm talking about when I say Sweet Pops. We're going to pop it up. Give it some dimension. And look, all we used was a stencil. The only stamp we needed was a sentiment. I'm going to put this, let's see, where do I want to put it? Oops. Maybe I want to put it mid card because I don't want to cover up the moon. I don't want to cover up the cool stuff that I did. I want to cover that. I don't want to cover the moon. So we're going to put it about right here. Is that straight or is that crooked? I can't tell. I didn't press it down yet because I want to make sure I got it straight. Super stellar. I'm lining it up on my mat. It looks like it's pretty straight to me. There we go. Look at that. What do you guys think? Ta-da! We made our own universe. And it was super fun. This, this is a really good boy card for sure. Right, you guys can see it up close. And look how easy it was. And just moving those around made it, and that one look like Earth, and that one look like the moon. And how fun is that? super fun I hope you guys enjoyed that I really enjoyed making that with you guys I won't lie I kind of played with it ahead of time <laughs> I play with it all I played with a ton of these remember we did this one as well so we have a, several different scenes even this one is super awesome I think that um, maybe next week or something we'll do this little girl and we can put her on the moon. We'll put this girl on the moon. I think that would be fine. 
So maybe we'll color this up next week and we'll use this moon background so it doesn't go to waste. Of course, nothing in my house goes to waste. <laughs> I always use it at some point. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad you guys stuck around. I hope that you like it. I hope that you love these stencils as much as I do. This could be an orange. Um, but anyway, uh, so but you keep going black, but you got some of it, but you'll do to YouTube. Yeah, I'll download it to YouTube in a few minutes. So um, it'll be out there just as soon as it'll download. And you guys have a great evening. See me tomorrow, 6.30, starts at 6.10. Um, the slideshow starts at 6.10, 6.30 Central Time on Craft Roulette on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy, Dale, and Jack. <laughs> Yay! All right, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Good night.